Hello, everybody, and welcome to Daily Coaching. Daily Coaching are currently hosting a number of discussions with professional players um, around their experiences of being coached, um, from starting out within a grassroots setting um, through to academies, and then um, finally into the professional game um, over in England and also abroad. Um, and I'm delighted to announce today that with us speaking on this discussion, we have Kenji Gore, um, who is currently playing in Portugal um, as part of the national team. Um, and um, Kenji, First of all, massive thank you for you taking the time um, to join us here today. Um, and second, if you can, kind of just giving us a bit of an overview, um, talking about your experiences from when you first started out within football, um, kind of leading us up to where we are now. Hi, mate. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, basically how it all started was I was basically born into the football world. And uh, my dad was a professional footballer. And all the, my earliest memories of... of football and being involved in football was you know going to see my dad and and to and to actually feel the the atmosphere and to to point at him on the pitch and stuff like that and you know it, it's them it's them sort of things that that you know stick to you as you grow up and and when I was that age like my parents used to tell me all the time how much I loved the ball I was obsessed with the ball and and every present that used to buy me was was a ball so 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 that's how that's how it kind of started for me and and yeah I just I just love football and I could just remember just uh, always having a smile on my face while playing I, I was a little battler you know I always wanted to get the ball and I'd even tackle my own teammates my parents would say so so I really did love the ball and and you know it led me into um signing for Manchester United uh, being there for 10 years playing with some amazing players uh under some amazing coaches. And after that, I ended up at 18, moving to Swansea City, where I'm, um, I made my Premier League debut and had several loans at, um, at Isle of Den Haag, Northampton. And then after that, I, I came, yeah, I was back in Swansea and um, did well. I did really well in the under 23s. Then it got to a point where um, I decided to move on. And I moved to National, where I'm at now. And yeah, and now I'm out here playing. Uh, we just literally got promoted back into the first league. First season, we got relegated when I joined. So now we're back in the first league. So I'm just uh, grateful to, to be back in, back in with the first, in the first league. Oh, that sounds great. Um, an interesting journey as well. I think um, it's something we'll touch on in a bit. But um, I always kind of say when I'm speaking to players that I think it's important to experience a range of different clubs and different environments. Um, and I think that you, your credit to that, that you've done that. And I think when you face those different um, environments and scenarios, whether it be loan, whether it be sort of for an academy or whether it be for a professional team, you know, you're exposing yourself to so many different decisions um, and awarenesses and reactions to different people, different scenarios. So yeah, in interesting journey. Um, and we'll definitely touch on that in a minute. Um, so Interesting as well. Um, so I was going to kind of look at the first kind of area of this discussion around your sort of earliest or first coaching experience. So maybe your first coach, but interesting that you mentioned obviously about your family, um, obviously, you know, kind of bringing you into the game. Um, and I remember it's maybe a little bit off topic, but I remember um, a book I read once about Andre Agassi um, and uh, obviously the tennis player. And something that his family done was when he was a baby, you know, like the baby mobiles that you have above your cock, they put a tennis ball there. So automatically, kind of psychologically, he was involved in tennis before he could even, he could even make that decision before he knew it. So um, uh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's interesting that families do sometimes have that impact. So would you kind of say it was your dad that kind of was your first sort of influence in terms of getting you involved in football or was it kind of that first team that you kind of joined to the grassroots? Set? It was kind of, it's, it, yeah, like... I, I just remember just loving it, you know, like me and my brother were playing at the time and, and you know, we, 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 we ranged from, um, our age gap is like a year, a year and a half. Okay. So, so literally like he's, he's uh, just behind me and, and he, he didn't really have the love for the football that I had, you know, yeah. it was, it was like the same upbringing, the exact same thing. And, and we were actually at the time playing in the same teams and stuff. And, okay. and he just didn't really have the love. Like he would go to my mum and be like, do I have to go today and stuff like that? And, and I was just like, nah, I, I, I want to go join myself, actually go and play. And uh, he, we were actually together at City at the time, okay. at, uh, Man City at the time, young. And it just shows that, you know, you do have to have that hunger inside of you. It's like, it, yeah. I think it does come, come with you. And, and yeah, it's, it's really my, my, my first coach has to say, if I, if I, if I remember back yeah. correctly of the question, is, is kind of, is kind of uh, my dad. My dad is kind of being my first coach. He kind of like, um, 
you know, I, I can also remember like going, being in the back garden and playing all the time and saying, dad, come on, come on. He's after training, coming back and he's yeah. tired, he's stiff. And I can just remember saying, come on, man, come on. And then he'd like throw me the ball and I'd kick it, you know, like throw me the ball kick. And, um, and yeah, that was kind of my first coach, really. Oh, nice. I, it, again, it's interesting because I think so often we think that, you know, you have to go to a club and you have to, they're the ones that are going to teach you everything. Now, don't get me wrong. The, the benefit of, you know, your dad being a professional footballer anyway, he's going to obviously have, you know, quite a lot of knowledge and experience within that. But just in general, that interaction time and, you know, like you said, um, you know, parents from whatever industry they're within, coming home, playing with their son or their daughter in the back garden. And like you said, even if it's as simple things as kicking and passing the ball, I mean, I think every child from about the age of four to about eight love doing that with their parents. And their parents are probably thinking, they don't want to do anything different. And they're probably just standing there for about 10 minutes, kicking the ball backwards and forwards to each other. But you know, as a child, that's what you love to do. And I suppose it's that added benefit as well. Like when um, quite a lot of people play in grassroots teams, they like to play in teams with their friends. I suppose it's a similar situation with family that, you know, you enjoy it and you're kind of first attracted to it because you get to do it with your dad or you get to do it with another family member. It's that kind of, you know, sibling relationship rapport that's, that's building. So, um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, it, is. It, is, it is. It is a blessing that is really, to be honest, when I look back at it, it is a blessing that he actually, you know, wanted to come and play outside with me and actually gave me that time and, and energy to actually, you know, be there with me and actually be present there with me. You know, it's like, like you said, you'd pass it back and forward. That's what you enjoy. But it's like, you would like say, come on, come on. You know, that's little things like that, that would like to be like, yeah, this is what I want to do. And, um, and yeah, that's, I love it. I loved it. Yeah. And, and as well, in a way, you know, they know you best. So, you know, when you're getting bored or you might need a little bit of a challenge and, you know, things like that, they're the ones who kind of understand, okay, well, now I know I need to challenge or now I know he's getting a bit tired, so we'll stop. Whereas yeah. if you're training, yeah. it's sometimes a bit of a, a harder environment to do that in. But yeah, no, I totally think that it's, it's a benefit of that. But then also a very important point that, you know, family and, and peers, I suppose, can have such a big impact on that first initial attraction into the game. Um, so, yeah, interesting point. Um, so uh, kind of just talk us through sort of the first club you joined. Um, obviously, you know, you mentioned there about your brother, you and your brother playing at City at the time. But what was the kind of process before that? Was there a local grassroots team you was playing for? Um, and how did that move to Man City and obviously later on Man United happen? Yeah, so it's actually a funny story. Okay. Like uh, my dad literally told me the other day, it's actually on, on my podcast, we spoke about it. Yeah. And he said, uh, he, said <laughs> he said that my first game for when I played for, for grassroots, yeah. I played with like uh, the, year, the year above. Okay. And, and there was a city scout there. And the city scout went straight to my dad and said, is that your son? <laughs> In my first game, that I played, I was think I was like six, and 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 he, my dad said no, he's not interested. Uh, it's his first game, like let him enjoy. It. Yeah. But then and then and then um, I go well. Obviously, I, after the game, I had no idea. I just, just you know I just love love playing football. Then obviously my dad told my mum the story, and my mum's like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? You're killing his dream. You're killing the game." He's like, "My dad's like, just let him enjoy. Like, just let, the guy's just started, sort of thing." And obviously mum took control after that, and uh, yeah, he came to the next game, and and he, he said again, like, "Do you want to come?" And, and me and my brother ended up then going and training with Man City and United at the same time. Okay. And um, yeah, that was a real, real good process. And then it gets to a certain point where you have to choose. You know, it gets to, I think it's yeah. under eight or under nines where you have to actually put pen to paper and sign for the club. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, at that time I chose uh, Manchester United. Nice, nice. Um, and um, on that point, as well, so obviously, you know, quite a quick transition, which um, again, I think adds to the, the scenarios really. I mean, there's some obviously stuck in grassroots football for ages. And, you know, even when they go into an academy or professional game, it's a shock to them because they've all they've known is grassroots for so long. So I suppose one one benefit of that was kind of a quick transition allowed you to mix and become comfortable with, with those different environments, but then also um, not really notice any different because, it's, like you said, from your point of view um, and at that age as well, it's it's just playing the game. It's just lovable. Mm -hmm. um, but what was the kind of um, differences then between sort of the coaching that you was experienced too? So. Obviously, I know that at a young age, and um, there's a quite a big emphasis from the FA on um, five to 11-year-olds sort of, you know, getting lots of active ball time, uh, loving the ball, 
uh, making decisions, all that kind of process. But um, maybe say, for example, like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, even that wasn't the thing then. What kind of coaching was you experienced at Man City and um, at Man United? And did that make a difference? Yeah, so actually there was one, um, <laughs> there was actually a significant moment that I remember. And at City, they were like saying, okay, two touches, <laughs> you know, and it was like, I didn't enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it, you know, you know, like, I just didn't want to want to do that. Like, and then at United, you played with so much more freedom. It was like, um, Rene, Rene Maldersey was actually the coach back then at United. And he kind of, he kind of made me make the decision. He was a big influence in my career, to be honest, of, of who I am right now. And, and I remember his coaching styles of, of like, you know, when he had like numbers, so number one would be take it, having the ball in the middle. Then number two would be going to the side, other side, and then number three would be a roll. So he'd like, so we'd know the numbers off by heart. Yeah. And then yeah. he'd be shouting the numbers, and then we had to do it. And it, da, 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 right. other side, da, da, da. Right. and it was like it was like it was like uh, that sort of thing. And he made it fun, and he made it into, yeah, man. It, I can just remember it. It was so it was it was a good time. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's uh, yeah, an important think point as well because, like you said, it's that was your decision making that went with that process because like you said it it made it fun it made it enjoyable Um, and I think sometimes especially within England um, unfortunately there's this big fear and pressure of you know as soon as you get to academy it's done very technically based um, you know it's um, less like you said less ball time and don't get me wrong it's changed over recent years um, which is obviously a positive thing but yeah I think especially at that age group as well it's so important that you're still able to play football and play with freedom and express your ability on, on the ball as it is um so yeah mass- massively important i think um and did that kind of change um, from when you went to swansea because obviously i'm taking it swansea obviously have a slightly different style of play um and obviously academies usually um go down within their age groups of how they want their their, their teams to play so that obviously when you get to the first team it's kind of something you already know because you've kind of been taught it through the different age groups um, but yeah, was was there a different process at Swansea, and um, how easy was it kind of to transition from the youth teams in Swansea, and then like, when you first made that Premier League um, appearance? Yeah, so at United, you know, you're playing with the the world's best players, and in my age group at the time, you know, Andreas Pereira, Adnan Januzaj, I can go on forever. But they literally, you know, you're playing on, you're playing with some top class players, and at that time, you know, it's the norm, it's the norm to play with them guys and and to to be with them every day, to train with them every day. And then when, when I actually moved to Swansea, it was a quick transition because Swansea also played from the back. Yeah, like, yes, it was like, it was like they played, this, this, they played the exact same style. Like I, remember, I can remember when I made the decision to, to go to, to Swansea, I watched the, the final of the FA Cup. And I remember they played a centre mid, centre back. They played key centre back. Yeah. And I was like, this team is unbelievable. They had Wayne Routledge, Nathan Dyer on the wings. And I was just like, I want to go to this club. And then uh, I, actually, I actually ended up signing there, for, got a two-year contract, and it was an amazing time. I went there, went, it started really well, was training with the first team and a lot, and, and yeah, like, it was just a great, great transition, to be honest. Nice. And, and obviously, you mentioned as well that within your time at Swansea, um, there were some loans as well, um, which you went out to. Um, how was that? Because, I mean, obviously, like you said, you obviously been to some big clubs in terms of, like you said, in terms of the, the Man City setup, the, the Man United setup. Um, and like you said, Swansea, I mean, you know, everyone's aware of how forward-thinking Swansea are as a club um, and the way that they play and their beliefs. And I think it's, it's credit to them, um, even though that they are in the championship now, they, they still play such an attractive way of football. Um, and I think that's what helps attract um, you know, big-name managers or big-name players to, to come to their similar to, to yourself. Um, what was the loans like? Because I'm taking it, obviously, you know, you've kind of been brought up to, like you said, kind of play in a certain style of play, a certain way. You're there at Swansea and you've been there in terms of the academy through to the um, first team. And then you're out on loan to a team that plays completely different football, different league, and probably some of the tactics go out the window. Um, so, yeah, what, what was that kind of like? So, to be honest, there was, there was like, I... I um... So I'm at Swansea and I end up making my first team debut after doing really well in the under-23s, playing really well. And after that, I, I, I wanted more of first-team football. Of and I decided then to go on loan to Ardo Den Haag in Holland. And that was, that was a massive learning curve for me of how 
the other side of football is. You know, it's like the other side of football where, you know, how do you handle certain things like not playing? You know, it's like that sort of thing of now now living in a big city on your own. It's that it's that certain that certain things that you have to go and experience a bit in your life, you know, it was a big learning curve and a massive, massive experience for me. But um, as regards to um, the playing style, I don't, they also like, in Holland, it's the, all with the ball still. Like it's yeah. still, the training sessions are with the ball. Like we didn't do mad running for preseason. Like it wasn't even like that. It was just like still with the ball. So it was, it was, still, a, it was still a good transition to go there. Yeah, you know, so it was kind of there, and then I go back to Swansea, end up, uh, yeah, end up being with the first team, training with them, and everything, but playing with the 23s, and then I end up the next season going on loan to Northampton, and that was a big shock, you know, that was kind of a big shock. Like the manager uh, at the time, he, he, we ended up first playing four three three, you know, playing well and and keeping the ball and stuff, but then you know you lose one game, it's four. Awful. And and I've never experienced that side of football, you know, where it's luck and, and you're just gambling. Like, yeah. I'm not really a guy that will just gamble to running behind. Like, it's like needs to be planned sort of thing. It's like, yeah. I can't just gamble on the ball for running for the sake of running. Like, I, I just don't have that in my mind. Like, I want it to go, okay, if you're going to dink it in there, like, I'm going to come inside or you're going to dink it, get the flick on, but it's all about timing, right? Yeah. I need to know the timing rather than you just banging it and then me running. <laughs> so I, I, I'm not, I wasn't used to that. So it was such a, a learning curve for my mind. And, and also what was massive was that when I went on loan was that they're playing for their bread on the table. Like they're playing for, yeah. for like their life. You know, so that was also a massive experience where I was just kind of playing for wanting to play for the top league. And that was that. Like, I didn't care about money at that time. Like it yeah. was not even about the money. It wasn't even about anything like that. I just wanted to be at the top. And yeah. this is just a, a stepping stone for me to get to the top. Yeah. And then that, that's what that's what kind of my, my mindset was. I was like, I'm just going to play here, go back to Swansea and be in the first team. That was literally my mindset. It wasn't even a thought of what football really is and what it actually yeah is about you know so that was a massive learning for me at the time yeah and i reckon you you hit the nail on the head there what you said about like you said that the different clubs have obviously different uh, structures different um you know goals and, and aims within their club and like you said it's no discredit to someone hampton but yeah because they're obviously down in the lower leagues you know it's going to be that it's going to be players like you said who are literally battling for places because you know if they lose that contract then they may not have a club to go and play for. And, you know, it shouldn't be this way, but they're probably looking like someone like yourself coming in from Swansea and probably thinking, well, you, you're, you're fine. You play for Swansea. Do you know what I mean? It's that kind of, of, of process. And, and as well, even from a coaching or managerial perspective, you know, they'll be thinking, right, well, I'm bringing you in and you have all these experiences, let alone the experiences from before as well with the, the academies and stuff like that. So there's probably a bit of pressure as well because it's kind of like, well, you know, you're the one they're bringing in to, to help them out in those scenarios and those settings. But um, I suppose being at those big clubs and playing under such big um, influences in terms of coaches, managers, you know, it probably makes it a bit easier to to be able to transition again, that word, into these different scenarios and go, well, look, you know, you're true to your beliefs of what you've done up until where you've got to. So again, it's for you, even taking it back to when you're just playing football. You know, and 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 doing it for for the purpose of what you're doing it for. Um, so obviously you've been on a couple of loans. Um, and then just talk to us briefly about where you you are currently at now, and um, you know, if there are there any sort of major changes there? Is is it like you said? It's obviously a new cultural change. So, yeah. So I come now to Portugal, and the Portuguese league. You know, you they they want to play. It's uh, they they do play, and they've got some real fantastic players out here, real Brazilians and. You know, then them guys with close controls and stuff like that. And, and there, there is some very good talent out here. But, um, yeah, I, I, I ended up, like, uh, adapting well, to be fair, because of, cause of that. And yeah. the, the biggest, the, the hardest thing was really the language. Like, even though the coach, Costinha, at the time spoke really good English, you know, uh, played for some massive clubs, won the Champions League. And he, he, he helped me a lot at the time. And, and we actually went to Portuguese lessons, which helped. But it, it, it's difficult when the whole team and your players don't really speak English. Yeah. So, 
so yeah, it gets to the point then where, where you're like looking around and you're like, hey, I need, I, I need to start learning the language and stuff like that to actually be able to speak with the teammates, even though the talking is on the pitch, right? You shouldn't have to talk. You shouldn't have to talk. Your movement should, your movement should, you should decide how you talk. So, so it's kind of, it's kind of that building that respect with the players also in that side of, in, in that side of things. But yeah, like now, as I said, like the first season was, was, um, was a good learning. Like we, we actually got relegated, you know. So that was that was a different side to to, to football where where I was like, wait, whoa, we're going with like the fans. The fans weren't happy. Like. Um, it was a big process of, of getting relegated and then we get, well, now we get promoted and we're back in the first league. It gives you that extra, extra, extra drive and ambition to really go after your dream again and, and to really know that you're going after something. Yeah, no, totally. And I think, again, it just adds to those experiences of kind of going from, like you said, a relegation situation to now getting promoted and, you know, it is that big thing of, you know, obviously how you get to the player, but also from a coach's or managerial perspective, you know, what's that manager going to do to really motivate you, you, you as players and get you out of that situation? Because obviously um, I'm taking it, you know, manager brings you in for a certain reason, whether it be you fit their style of play, whether it even just be you as a person. I mean, sometimes, you know, I know managers that have brought players in because they like them as individuals and actually they can work with them. But um, especially as well with whether it be relegation or promotion, uh, circumstances that you may need again similar to that Northampton situation that you probably found yourself in they're getting a player in because they need you to have an impact right away and I mean you know you're still very young that thing of you still developing is kind of taken on the back burner a little bit because all of a sudden at a, a, a perceived bigger club you may be able to do that because you know they say look you've got more time but at a club where maybe you need to put in that graft it's I can imagine it being a tough tough move it's really true and especially in Portugal, like they're so quick to do that. They're so yeah. quick to say, "All right, you, you've got two get you like two games. You don't play good for two games." They're like, "What? We, this guy's horrible. Like this guy's this." And the president sat on the bench with us, so you know yeah. you, you're getting that arm and everything yeah. like this. Like, come on, you know. What I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, that was a big, big like learning for me as well. Like, imagine, imagine the owner of Chelsea sitting on the bench. Yeah. Like it's just weird. Like here, out here, like that was my biggest. <laughs> biggest thing when I came here I was like looking around like thinking how can the, the president of the club be sat on the bench like just just go and sit where like like it, just, it, it was it was, such a big, it was such a big learning curve for me that I was like wow like these guys it, it really is a lot and they want you to and it is a lot of pressure for you to play because they want instant instant results yeah. you know they invest in you and they want instant results you can't have time to 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 start play to start saying okay you know give the, give him time it's like no they want it results right now and that was also something that I had to overcome and and to to realize that that's what football is you know football yeah. is like that if Bruno Fernandez went to United and he didn't perform the way he is he's yeah. not good enough yeah. you know and and that's what and that's and that's just how ruthless football is but it's how you're going to handle that and that's yeah. why and that's why it's all sorts of different coaches you need that's why I have inv I invest in my own mindset coaches also it's like you invest in everything in your life that is going to prepare you to to be the best that you can be, and that's why I'm I'm on my journey now to actually being a mindset coach and supporting footballers being the best on and off the pitch. Because I realised that mindset for me is the most important thing for a footballer. Like, how is it that you handle not playing? What do you do when things get hard? What do you do when coaches tell you a certain thing and do another? Like what you're gonna do in that process, you know, it can get tough. It can get all on top of you. The pressures of everything, the pressure of the fans, the social media, the media. Like, yeah. what do you do? You yeah. know, so it's like it's that real, is that real um, understanding of 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 what to do and, and to understand who you are at the core, rather than being somebody that the club wants you to be or be somebody that your dad wants you to be. I'm not saying don't listen to them, but you know, it's it's good. Is you have to know who you are and live towards who you are. Yeah, because it's easy to get lost. Yeah, definitely, and also to have those different influences, like you said, if if you've had different coaches in your time, and you're able to pick up certain things, and obviously as well taking things from your dad as well, um, is obviously mm -hmm. that, that massive influence there. Um, and I think you're 100 percent right there about the, the mindset thing. Um, you know, so often everything about football is always kind of led down one route of technical, 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 and that's all everybody any anybody ever thinks about. Um, and 
you know, uh, I often say two things. That number one, I think to, to be a footballer, you need a mixture of talent, motivation, opportunity. Um, so I think, you know, you, you can have ability, but you also need internal motivations. Like you said, with the situation between you and your brother, you may have just been a bit more motivated to say, that you know, I want to be a footballer. Um, but then also opportunity in terms of, um, you know, like you said, being able to actually play if you're not able to play because of whatever reason. You know, um, some of the players I spoke to on this series well mentioned about they've been brought in by a manager. Two months later, the manager gets sacked. A totally different manager comes in and doesn't fit their style of play. And, you know, they don't want them to play. And that's, that's no fault of the player. Just because, and also, to be fair, it's a bit harsh of saying this, but it's probably no fault of the manager. Either. You know, the manager that comes in obviously has their own style of play, their own ways of thinking. So it, it's tough. But I and he wants to win. Yeah, 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 exactly. He wants to win yeah. at the end of the day. Like, the manager just wants to win. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I, I do, I think that the psychological corner of football is so neglected and it's so wrong that it's neglected because you know part part of this this series is obviously about people's experiences within coaching and you know I say about obviously 25 percent of it's probably about the technical elements but it is also about like you said the psychological elements you know like I said how have you dealt with those loans how have you dealt with going from grassroots to academies to uh, professional game yeah it's all football but it's all different environments it's all different types of managers it's all different types of coaches and I, I totally agree with you. I think that that mindset is so, so important. And the big thing is even after football, you know, these players and these obviously have a careers of football. Then what? You know, it's kind of an interesting process as to what happens. And it's interesting to hear, obviously, like that you're going into kind of that route of becoming a mindset coach. And then again, some of the other players are going down the route of becoming um, football coaches in terms of being at clubs and things like that. So, yeah, it's interesting to hear how you kind of fit those experiences to what well, experiences you've gained and then putting the experiences into um, a sort of second second movement within football. Um, but um, kind of summing up all of the experiences that you have had in at these different clubs um, in terms of kind of, I suppose, a coaching aspect of things, uh, what would you say, what type of coaching, whether it be technical, whether it be psychological, whether it be motivational, whatever it is, what brings out the best Kenji Gore? How do they get what the best out of you? Yeah, it's, it's just playing with freedom, you okay. know, playing with freedom and, and just and just like, you know, having that space to to kind of play my game. Yep. You know, it's like sometimes as a winger, you get limited. You know, they tell you to play a certain way. Like my coach right now is like, we have to play inside. Like yeah. I'm not on the line, you know. So it's kind of just having that freedom to, to kind of go where I want to go and, and kind of get in them pockets, but also get out wide so they can hit that switch so I can get one-on-one -on -one with the guy and make things happen so it's yeah that get, getting that real freedom and the trust in me that that I can that I can kind of go go after you know going going for going for whatever I want in this uh, in this career yeah that's no makes sense and I think that like you said that trust in me is so big um I often talk about you know you know, we just said there about managers coming in potentially just wanting to play a player you know you kind of have that big thing of players or managers needing to understand their players and if they don't understand their players then you know it can go one or two ways really um I mean depending on how the player reacts to the manager and and, and the coaches but yeah they need to understand and like you said, that level of trust of so as like I said even uh, the example you gave about if you're not playing why you're not playing you know what can you mm -hmm. do to play next time and it's it's having that that rapport and building that relationship yeah. I think um, it really is because it, it's also like you know as players you can get into that victim mode of why does it always have to happen to me yeah. or the coach doesn't like me or the, the it's because of the the gaffer or the, the chairman that says to this person and, and it's just like it's out of your control you know focus on the things that are actually in your control so you can actually do something about it like uh, look at yourself are you giving it all every day you know are you are you doing your extras to get yourself ready for that opportunity because your opportunity is coming but are you even ready for it yeah you know i see a lot of times where people you don't. You get your opportunity when you least expect it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's when the opportunity comes when you least expect it. So you got to be ready for every opportunity that you get. Like I've also seen where you know managers come in and and the players like, yeah, you don't want him anymore. Soon as you lose three, four games, you, he's suddenly in the team. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, it's like, but if you're not giving your all every day, then you're never gonna play. Yeah, yeah, totally. You get what I'm saying, and yeah. that's where and that's where the element of mindset comes in because. It gets to a point, bro, where everybody is good. Yeah. In a professional industry, everybody's good. Yeah. Everybody has quality. Everybody has a good first touch. Everybody has their own qualities. You know, one's faster, one's stronger, one's, one's uh, 
bigger, you know, like one, one's always, one's the best dribbler, you know, one's always got so much, so much more than the other person, but it's just about knowing what you bring to the team and, and knowing that, focusing on your own things to try and, to try and do that. Yeah, no, it makes total sense. And, and again, I think it kind of goes back to that bit you mentioned about trust as well. Like you said, that example of if a manager says, right, you're not, you're not in the team for three or four games. And like you said, if you're still putting in that work, you're still putting in the effort and showing that actually, do you know what, even away from being in the team, they can still trust you to go back in. But then equally as well, the player can trust the manager. Because I suppose, you know, if you're isolated out of a team for X amount of games and then the manager calls you, it's when you've got to put on that professional head and think, well, do you know what? Whatever I may think about the manager and the decisions as to why I'm not in the team, it's like you said, it's putting that, that mindset of going, well, do you know what? I need to play. I'm, I'm doing this for X, Y, Z reasons. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's important. Um, so, brilliant journey, brilliant insight in terms of um, the career that you've had from starting out young, um, the transitions into uh, the, the two different academy setups and to move into the 23s with, with Swansea playing in the Premier League, um, playing back um, down into the, into the League 1, the League 2 settings, and then obviously going across now to um, Portugal as well. Um, kind of summing it up then, I mean, it's a very cliche question, so I'm going to put a bit of a spin on it. But um, what would your advice be then to players in terms of who are looking to try and make it as a footballer? Um, but then also, what would your one piece of advice be to a coach? So, And what I mean by that is... Um, as a player, what do coaches need to be aware of when they're coaching their players? Um, and something that maybe is a bit of advice for them when they're coaching their players. Mm-hmm. Mm, strong question. Um, the first one, I would say to a younger player to just, you know, I would tell him to work on his craft. Yep. I would tell him to work on his craft, you know, and, and make sure, you know, the cliche again, like give your all every single day. You know, that's your win. Like, that is what, what's going to get you to where you want to go at the end of the day. Like, success only comes with hard work and dedication. So, yeah. you, if you never give up and give your all, you won't lose. And, and that's where, and that's, I'm a true believer in that. So, just continue on your journey and uh, take every experience as it is because football is a short career. So, you might as well enjoy it while you can. Yeah, definitely. Um, and That's in terms of the um, coaching one, so the reason why I asked this as well is because I think it's so important, like I said, about understanding the player. And I think so often, mm-hmm. obviously different scenarios, different environments, but coaches come into teams and they're like, right, my way of thinking, my way of doing things, but we're forgetting that, you know, it's a player's yeah. game. Yeah, I think, I think obviously he's a leader, right? He's a leader of the team. And, and comes with, you know, I feel like he should have a relationship with the players and they should all know oh, stand yeah. you know it's just like it's just like yeah a player should really know where they where where they are rather than like I can remember being at Ado Den Haag when you know getting told that I'm going to play and then I don't play like just tell me where I stand you know yeah. and it's just like then you can kind of go on with that emotion of where you know where you are and then you can kind of work towards what you want yeah. But if you don't know what you what you're what you're you know what you're doing, and then you get disappointed with your expectations being a certain way, then you're going to react in a certain way also. So I feel like that's what my, my advice to coaches would be: is like kind of let people know where they are and, and be straight up with it. Like this is my decision, and that like the players accept it. Yeah. Like you, yeah. you accept the decision, but you have to stick by your decision. Don't then say ah because of this and because no. Like I'm playing this guy. Like you're close. Yeah. Like if you're close, tell me I'm close. But also say if I'm not up to scratch just be honest with me yeah, like just yeah. be honest I, I literally like that's what I would say just be honest with the players that like, we just want an honest coach to tell me where exactly where I am at so I can process things and, and, and work towards what I want yeah no totally I think that's a fantastic message because um, whether you're just starting out within the game and I, listen, I hear it so many so many times coaches saying yeah you're going to make it you're going to make it well, why are you going to make it you know what, what what have they been doing right give them some explanation as to what your evaluation of that is. Um, and if they're not going to make it, like, like you said, so don't lie, just be honest. Just say, look, do you know what? I don't, I don't think you've got what it takes to get to the highest level, whatever it may be. But then also from a professional level as well, like you said, in terms of being in and out of the team um, or um, some of the situations that you may have found yourself in when you went out on loan. If someone says to you, do you know what, Kenji, it's better for you to go out on loan rather than um, being here or whether that be um, you go into management and saying, look, do you know what? I think I want to play more, more football, uh, first team football, let me go out on loan and them saying to you, yeah, do you know what? I think that'll be good for your career or they say, no, 
for no reason. You know, it's this. They said it's got to have that rapport and that 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 honesty. I think is so important. Um, but yeah, listen, Kenji, fantastic insight. Like I said, into your career in terms of where you started as to where you are now. Um, obviously, brilliant news in terms of the promotion for next season. Bit of a wait now until that actually gets up and going, but. Obviously, a lot of time for you to be able to again mentally process that and and get yourself in the best sort of shape physically and mentally for that. Um, a great insight in terms of from a player's perspective, but then also, like I said, and kind of what this whole discussion is around as well, um, advice and um, insight for coaches as well, because I think that is so important. Um, I know you mentioned about your you've got a podcast as well. Um, are you happy to promote it and um, since, say your socials? And what I will do is I'll put all the information in terms of how they can access the podcast yourself and um, also your social media handles um, in the description too. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. That would be great. Um, so, yeah. Want, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, basically, I've also started my uh, business on the ball, okay. which yeah. is personal which is personal development and mindset coaching for professional footballers. So and as a part of that business, I've, I've started a podcast, which I wanted to create for, for footballers to kind of share their story, share their experiences and share their, their challenges that they've faced in their, in their life, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch also. And then, and then for kind of other players listening to it to kind of feel motivated and feel inspired by other people's stories to understand that they're not alone going through the things that they're going through. And to also know that, you know, everybody has their journey and everybody's completely different. You know, we're in this industry, but we feel like we're alone, but everybody's going through the same things. So it's everybody's story is completely different. Obviously, do not compare to anybody, but also see what you can take from, from other people. And, and that's why I kind of wanted to, to make a platform where people do um, learn and get inspired from other people's stories. Yeah, no, totally. And, and, also, and also a part of that business, I've got, um, I've made a mindset planner. Okay. which is basically supports athletes in getting clear on their visions and understanding that we're way more than just footballers, you know, setting your daily goals and, and really, and really get going after what you desire in this world. Like don't wake up by accident, like go after whatever you want to go and do in this world. Like what, what is your visions for, for your career? What is your visions for your finances? What is your vision for your relationships? Like it's so important to know what you want from your relationships so you can actually know when it's the right one or know when, what you want from your friendship like it's just understanding what you want from it and then make the goals and make the 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 steps to go after that so that's 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 that bro yeah no perfect um and i will definitely make sure i get both of those um pieces of information in the comments below and also share that out myself as well um like i said i think that's fantastic from a from a footballer's perspective and also whether it be like i said you're, you're an elite professional now or even just starting out in the game they're, like I said, they're massive things. I think so many children or young players go into the game thinking, I want to be a footballer. But then when you're a footballer, that's, that's it. Oh, what now? You know, and I think that's massive. Like you said, the, the plan is just understanding what you want to achieve, but then also not neglecting, like you said, things like relationships, things like finances, things like environment, you know, where, are you, where, where is it you want to be settled down to? Um, you know, do you mind traveling abroad to go and, and, and play? How's that going to impact family, friendships? relationships so yeah i think that's that's great what you're what you're doing and um again like i said the podcast as well too so um i think that's a really interesting insight not only from your own journey but then also you know these other players as well so um yeah i'll definitely make sure i get those posts out there um kenji it's been fantastic um insight like i said into what you what you do and and, and where you're at and also where you're going to as well um but like i said i massively do appreciate you taking the time um and Listen, when the season's up and running, I wish you the best of luck for, for, for the new season. I, I really appreciate it, man. I really appreciate coming on here and, and uh, being able to share my story and kind of give some, some insights of, of what I love what you're doing and uh, continue on your journey as well, man. Thank you. I very much appreciate it. And like I said, we'll catch up soon then, all right, Kenji? Definitely, bro. Thank no you. No problem at all. Take care.